I'm Dr. Brent Clyde, neurological surgeon, providing expert guidance when a neurosurgical solution is an option for you. Do you experience sharp, radiating pain in the leg? Have you been told you have sciatica? This condition is also frequently referred to as a pinched nerve. There are many causes of nerve pain in the leg. One of the most common is a herniated lumbar disc. A herniation is simply a piece of disc material which has escaped the normal covering called the annulus. Some patients recall a sudden pain in the back that preceded the leg pain by days or weeks. This does not always occur, but when it does, it comes from a tear in the covering or the annulus. The central disc, called the nucleus pulposus, is a rubbery cartilage-like material, not a runny, gooey liquid like some might think. If a piece of the rubbery nucleus breaks off and escapes through a tear in the covering, it can press on a nerve to the leg. The central nucleus is like an eraser, firm and rubbery, yet as it ages it becomes more brittle and pieces can break or crumble from it. If the covering is weak or torn, these pieces can then cause problems. Lumbar disc herniation is not a dangerous condition, it is a painful condition. When a firm piece of disc presses on a nerve root, pain develops. Pain is the most frequent complaint in a patient with a herniated lumbar disc. Some patients may describe numbness or even weakness. If numbness or weakness is present, then the nerve is dysfunctional. However, if only pain is present, the nerve is simply irritated. A lumbar disc herniation can be diagnosed with an MRI or a special CT scan with injected dye. In general, lumbar disc herniation is not a risk to the nerves. However, if the compression of the nerve is severe enough, there can be a risk of long-term permanent dysfunction. This is unusual. Most lumbar disc herniations can be safely left alone were it not for the intense pain. If you have failed the passage of time and the use of other treatment options, a microdiscectomy might be right for you. A microdiscectomy is performed through an incision less than one inch in length. Using a microscope or endoscope, the muscle is gently taken off the bone of the spine and a small opening in the bone about the size of a dime is made. Through this hole, the nerve root is exposed, as is the central nerve sac or thecal sac. This is where the nerve originates. This model shows the front view of your spine. These are the vertebral bodies or bones. This is the disc material. Exiting on the side of the spine through small nerve holes called foramen are each nerve shown in yellow. When performing a microdiscectomy, the approach is from the back side of the spine. A one inch incision is made between two spinous processes, these bones shown here, and through that opening muscle is pulled off of the bone and a small opening in this bone about the size of a dime is created so that you can see inside and see the nerve and its compression from the disc below. Just under or deep to the nerve root is the disc fragment. By gently moving the nerve to the side, the fragment is seen and felt and is removed with a small instrument. The goal is to remove any material that's compressing the nerve root. Sometimes a small amount of enlarged arthritic bone and joint tissue is also removed to make more room for the nerve. The bulk of the remaining non-herniated disc is left alone. This procedure takes less than an hour and is done as an outpatient. Patients typically stay for about six hours to recover and for observation. The success rates of microdiscectomy in carefully screened patients is over 90%. Risks are small and occur rarely. If you or your physician thinks this might be your problem, you will need to have imaging and I would be happy to review your history and imaging and consult as appropriate. To learn more about lumbar disc herniation, please visit my website at www.ebrainmd.com. You will find more detailed information and be able to request a consultation.